Removal of melted fuel is considered one of the toughest challenges in the decommissioning. Now the government-backed entity overseeing the process has revealed strategic new plans. Officials from the Nuclear Damage Compensation and Decommissioning Facilitation Corporation are looking at three options. The conventional method involves filling the containment vessels with water, but that poses challenges of repairing potential leaks. The second option would allow workers to remove the melted fuel from the top of the reactor. And the third method involves creating a hole in the side of the container. Officials warn steps must also be taken to prevent radioactive materials from spreading in the air. They say high levels of radiation could affect not just workers, but robots and other machines. The Japanese government and the plant's operator expect to choose a method by 2017. The operator of the crippled nuclear plant in northeastern Japan is employing some high-tech help for the decommissioning. Officials with Tokyo Electric Power Company want to see inside a Fukushima Daiichi reactor, but it's too dangerous. So they're sending in a robot instead. Three of the plant's reactors melted down after the March 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Workers haven't been able to determine the extent of damage or find molten fuel. High levels of radiation are keeping them away. TEPCO officials plan to put a remote-controlled robot into the number one reactor containment vessel. They'll be able to steer the snake-like machine around obstacles. They'll measure radiation and temperature levels. And the robot's camera will allow them to see the damage. Until now, they've used computer simulations to try to understand what's inside. They've gathered results indicating the nuclear fuel has melted and fallen to the bottom of the vessel. TEPCO officials hope that the robot will help them gain clues on how best to remove the nuclear fuel. Japan's nuclear watchdog is sending inspectors to monitor drills at idled reactors. They want workers to know how to deal with severe accidents before they're given the green light to put their plants back online. All commercial reactors are now offline. The Nuclear Regulation Authority has to determine whether the operator's measures meet the stricter requirements introduced after the 2011 Fukushima accident. Four reactors have cleared the new regulations. Two are in central Japan at the Takahama plant, and two are in the southwest at the Sendai plant. Operators are required to explain procedures to handle severe accidents. One example is preventing damage to the reactor core by using newly introduced emergency power generation vehicles and pump trucks. Participants will be told about the accident scenario and they'll have to carry out the necessary procedures within a limited time. Similar checks will be conducted once a year to confirm that workers are capable of responding to accidents. Voters in parts of Japan are preparing to head to the polls to choose their local leaders. Many of them say finding ways to stop their communities from shrinking in size is a major election issue. They've seen the problem grow in certain parts of the country because of a rapidly aging population and low birth rate. NHK World's Tomoko Kamata joins us in the studio. Seeing that there are many communities on the brink of disappearing, I can imagine the candidates have a wide range of issues to discuss. How do you see the campaigns developing? Well, rebuilding local communities is the focal point of these elections. Candidates for 960 electoral districts in prefectural assemblies began their campaigns last week. But election officials say that about a third of the electoral districts needed no vote at all. This is because there were more seats than candidates or an equal number. Voter turnout in Japan has been declining. Four years ago, the figure for the gubernatorial races was just 53%. These figures suggest that more and more voters are losing interest in local politics. Tomoko, why do you think there's so much voter apathy? Well, one of the reasons is that local assemblies are losing their attraction. A quarter of the Japanese population is 65 years old or older. An increasing number of young people are leaving rural areas and fewer are participating in local assemblies. Some worry that without younger members, it will become harder to have active discussions in assemblies. So fewer people are coming forward to be candidates. It sounds like local governments are in dire need of help. 
What is the central government doing about this? Well, local revitalization is one of Prime Minister Abe's top priorities. He says it's important for local governments to come up with ideas for revitalization. Government leaders decided in December to support municipalities with flexible subsidies. They will give more than $80,000 to those towns and cities that submit their own plans to promote their economies and industries, such as creating agricultural specialties. Officials say that in four months, nearly 200 municipalities have submitted projects, including those to support child raising. I think more candidates are presenting their ideas to revitalize rural communities based on the reality in each region. Thanks very much for your insight. That was NHK World's Tomoko Kamata. When the fish and the legs catch fire, will it be worth it then? And when the cancer it's 90% or high, will it be worth it then? When the whole world's at war over water and oil, will it be worth it then? And when there's no more fighting, cause there's no more spoils, will it be worth it then? Oh, yeah.